Hello and welcome to AI for Retail Executives. In this lecture, we want to provide the why. Why are we making this course? And why are we targeting retail executives? The TLDR here is that we see a massive transfer, transformation coming for uh, uh, retailers. AI is being used to automate and optimize every single major part of the business, whether it's supply chain, whether it's checkout, whether it's inventory management, um, how to uh, in-store operations. It is, it's all happening, it's all coming. And I have spent uh, a number of hours with CXOs in, of major retailers in the UK, in Australia, in the US, in Canada. Um, and it disturbs me that uh, a lot of retail executives have um, delegated this knowledge downstream. And I think that's a huge mistake because this is not something that can be delegated. I think that the AI, AI strategy has to come from the top down, otherwise it just won't happen because it's too transforma transformational. It's a completely different way to think about the business. Um, and so that's who we want to target. We want to retrain retail executives to think about, to think differently about their business, to think, to know the basis functions, the, 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 the raw skills of AI, what it can do, what it can't do, and how to apply it and how people are applying it into every major vertical in the store. And so it, whether it's the supply chain or what have you, and if the executive does not understand that, that the CXO, CIO, CTO, uh, chief digital officer, COO, most importantly, in my opinion, then it can't operationalize it because it's going. It's not going to be massive automation. This this dystopia where it's going to be all robots doing everything is just not in in, in the cards for the next three decades. Um, and so this interim period where we, we need to think about AI to help uh, augment uh, some of the labor that's currently happening throughout the whole organization and how it all has to tie in together. And it really does need to all tie in together. This is why it has to be the retail. Uh, executive. that has to be the C-suite and this cannot be delegated. All right. So I'll very cursory discuss, um, you know, what's kind of happening in the market. You know, there's a number of folks that have talked about this massive transformation that's coming, that it has a global market value today of about 2 billion retail, uh, 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 AI in retail. Um, it's growing at 30% a year, which is pretty significant. And by 2027, it'll be at 20 billion. And, uh, and it, and it, breaking down into what? Like what, just, just AI for AI's sake? No, there's actual specific implementation uh, uh, implementations of AI. And this is, I like the Google uh, Cloud blog post, um, whether they're applying it to frictionless checkout, inventory optimization, uh, picker routing, all these different things. These are all different uh, methods um, or uh, use cases of AI. Um, and they estimate that it's going to unlock just in the United States 190 to 425 billion of economic benefit. And, I, and this is completely true. And I've seen a lot of this uh, happen with my own eyes. Um, these are some of the, the folks that have realized this and have invested billions of dollars into AI. Uh, Walmart, Kroger, Lowe's have each invested, uh, you know, between 1.7 and $9 billion into AI solutions to automate some major part of their business. Um, I think that, you know, getting out of uh, retail for a second, taking our retail hat off and just being a student of history, there's a lot of analogies that, that can be uh, found that will uh, uh, be salient and will apply to what we think is going to happen to retail. So uh, being from New York, having most of my family in finance um, growing up, uh, I saw this massive transformation happen when I was about 12 years old. And my uncles were, uh, you know, traders and such. And the trading pits in the year just 2000, 20 years ago, looked like this. Right over here. It was madness. And there was a few quants, really intelligent folks, rocket scientists, that figured out how to model, take in as input, all the context in the world. What every single trade is happening, take all that, create models to output a better trading strategy. And in 2000, maybe 10%, 15%, of trades were submitted algorithmically into New York Stock Exchange. All the rest of it was submitted by uh, uh, traders, uh, brokers that were, you know, saying, you know, calling like Ferris Bueller uh, in that uh, um, uh, piece. And this is, and if you look now, just, just 15 years later, 16 years later, that's what the trading pits look like now. 
it, you can't hear a peep. It's because seven, and now over 78%, and now to, uh, 2021, I just looked this up before the, I recorded this, uh, it's about 98% of trades in the New York Stock Exchange are submitted algorithmically. That's almost everything. And so that just happened over about 20 years. And so uh, what changed? There were a couple major things that enabled this to happen. The, no, the number one thing was the Bloomberg terminal. That, that gave accurate, real-time data and APIs that they could pull in and make these algorithms. And then the second major advancement was the math side. AI was good enough and people could trust it and it was proven and it was working and it was more accurate than any uh, uh, individual um, uh, broker, uh, whether they're the most experienced on the planet, the, the AI just outperformed. And, uh, and so that's why uh, you know, quants, if you look up the glass door salary of a quant is something like $500,000 a year. Um, because uh, just knowing really, being really, really good at math and being able to apply that math to those algorithms, um, to that data to achieve some objective, increase returns on, on, um, on your uh, assets, et cetera, um, uh, outperform. Uh, if you've seen this movie, Moneyball, it's absolutely one of my favorite movies. And I just think it's, it's no one is uh, um, immune from this uh, quantization of all verticals, even not even baseball. And so what went from a uh, seat of the pants kind of, I've been doing this a long time, Billy Bean, you know, um, to a uh, 22 year old who studied economics, but understood quantitative analysis, applied that to not just try to win, uh, uh, win games, but to win bases and think about and broke baseball down into a bite-sized chunks that an AI algorithm can actually figure out, a quantitative method could figure out. And today, it actually, it was only I, one of my friends works at the Mets and was telling me that, Francois, like I was going to say in 2016, it really transformed. He was like, five years later, every single uh, MLB team had an entire data science team. They never had that, never had one before. Now they have an entire team of folks that look like this on the right. Um, to help uh, uh, create algorithms, to, to pick the right team, to know what to pitch, to know what to play, and helps win games. It just works. And, uh, and if, you, if you haven't seen this movie, um, Brad Pitt plays the GM of the, uh, the Oakland A's. Um, they uh, uh, are the lowest budgeted team, and they won the AL West, despite being the lowest budgeted team, and having one-tenth the budget of the highest paid team, and somehow won uh, the AL West. Um, and so I think that this is exactly what's going to happen in retail and it just hasn't happened yet. And I think there's a, a lot of reasons for that. The main one is that shelf digitalization technology did not work. So there were robotic solutions. There were some other ones out there in the world that, that, uh, could estimate state and could understand what that was, but only until, uh, really this last year has shelf digitalization been scalable enough in, inexpensive enough and accurate enough. And that had a lot to do with deep learning computer vision, which we're going to talk about, which is my field. Uh, uh, I've, I've been an AI, a deep learning uh, computer vision researcher since 2012 for about nine years now. And, uh, and we're going to talk a lot about that in this course. But when that happens and that's scalable and that's very inexpensive and you can scan every shelf every hour of the day for less cost than what you're currently paying today. And you can use that data to, if you use that data, to input into your same SOP, you are missing the whole story. That's like putting a broomstick on a Roomba and trying to use it to mop the floor. That's not the way it was intended to work. You can do new things that were never before possible. And that's what this course is all about. Taking that data, you have real time, accurate data you can depend on and you can input that into every major piece of it. You can use that to planogram better. You can use that to run supply chain better, to order more accurately, to run your in-store operations more efficiently, um, all those things. And I think that uh, it's gonna take maybe two to three years until every major retailer is doing this, um, just because the, the increase in EBITDA is so, so impactful. And so just to, to uh, highlight that, we're talking about is taking real time shelf digitalization every hour of every day and feeding that into an AI system that learns 
And so if today your store manager has been a store manager for 10 years, you know, 10 years times uh, 365 uh, days a year, they have 3,650 years of experience. Our AI models will have the experience of 1 billion years of retail because we will train our, de our deep learning models on in a simulator that have played the game of retail for a billion years. And so who's gonna win? And that is what we're talking about here. It's massively transformational. It's playing the game of retail uh, like it's never been played before. That's what Amazon's going to do. That's what Walmart is doing. That is what uh, uh, all the major retailers are doing today. And if you're not doing this, you need to know how to do this. At least know about it, be knowledgeable on it, and choose to do one way or the other. So just very quickly, what happened in 2012 was massively transformational. We'll talk about this in the course, but there is a competition every year called ImageNet. Stanford runs it. That's, that was my research lab. We out, put out a million images, 1,000 images, 1,000 classes. And it'll be classes like this, like Siberian Husky will be one class, and it'll be 1,000 images of it. So Eskimo Sheepdog will be another uh, 1,000 images. And your deep learning model has to predict, given an image, what it is and classify it correctly. Uh, the best, accurate, most accurate models in 2010 were 70% accurate, maybe. And, uh, and nuanced here, but it's actually, and I get five guesses and I'm still only 70% accurate. Um, then in 2012, three folks out of uh, University of Toronto published a paper called AlexNet. It was uh, uh, Jeffrey Hinton, uh, um, uh, Alex Krzyzewski, and Ilya Setskiver. And so they published it. Now they're very famous in the AI community, probably the most famous and the most cited paper of all time uh, in AI. And so this is what happened. And I was there in 2012, and it was we thought they cheated. Uh, that it was such a meaningful step function. And from then on, this new method, which is convolutional neural networks applied, you know, trained on on a, a GPU um, using this back propagation algorithm, transformed the entire world. That begot things like. Siri, uh, um, Alexa, uh, self-driving car, um, AlphaGo, we'll talk about that in the course, all these other things, and is giving rise to uh, what Focal predicts will happen, what I predict will happen uh, to retail. And you can see over the next uh, four or five years, using those algorithms, we got to better than human level performance. So I can't tell the difference between a Siberian Husky and an Eskimo Sheepdog, I don't know if you can, but our AI algorithms can now, which is inc just incredible. It gave rise to many other things. Uh, automatic diagnosis for, of cancer detection in lung cancer. Um, uh, Self-driving car, we talked about this a fair bit. This is all deep learning computer vision based uh, application. Uh, adding color to images that didn't have any color in it before. Uh, uh, creating images of Elon Musk, what it would look like if he had facial hair. Uh, deep fakes of, uh, <laughs> of Donald Trump and uh, this, this, the founders of South Park made this very funny show uh, uh, called uh, Sassy Justice. It was very funny if you didn't watch it. Um, off, you know, automatic art generation. You know, that you can paint certain things and all of a sudden it will show, uh, um, it'll predict, you know, a interesting painting given that context. Um, this is some of the stuff that I worked on uh, uh, in my in my past, um, detecting where a self-driving car can park, the path it should take if it if it uh, if it needs to park, um, and emergency pull-offs, highways, all these different things that I've worked on before. Uh, this one I'm going to stop for a second and talk about. This one I think is the most important thing that we're going to talk about in the course, and it shows how an AI algorithm was used to beat the best Go player in the world. This is the game of Go, very interesting game, very simple game, impossible to master. Uh, Lee Sedol was the best player in the world. Uh, DeepMind was an organization that Google just bought uh, back in 2015, I think, um, that trained an AI model using reinforcement learning to play the game of Go better than anyone in the world. And it played him and it beat him. This, and it did so by playing it the game completely differently than uh, anyone who's ever learned Go would play. It defied laws and rules of Go that most people would say were, it was very taboo at best. 
to play on the fourth line, for example. Um, there's called, I think it's called move 37. It's a very famous move where it played on the fourth line and you never do that because you can get beat on the, on the tail side by playing on the third line. And so you don't play that. It played it and beat them. And so it will reinvent, it will find ways to win the game that are completely non-intuitive. And that is really, really important um, uh, if you are, are, are playing it the old way and someone comes in with a new way. Uh, aircraft collision avoidance system, I worked on that. To ha if you have two planes near that are kind of getting close to each other, um, this is actually live on every single airplane in the world. Um, so we actually do have this. It's uh, uh, called uh, ACAS. And uh, yeah, and we've also uh, worked on deep learning in retail quite a bit. We've worked on uh, out of stock detection. This is you know our shelf cam system at, at work. It's detecting out of stocks every hour of every day, um, and we have about thirty thousand of these cameras deployed right now. And we've worked on uh, what we call focal scan, which is a, a a little camera you put on the conveyor belt, and it can automatically detect the product that was placed there without doing a barcode scan or anything like that. But one thing that's really important in AI, and we're going to cover this in the course, is knowing what AI can't do. And if you accelerate too quickly with AI advancement, it will result in what happened to Uber, where uh, the self-driving car killed someone. This is absolutely morally uh, reprehensible. There is uh, limits to, it's not a panacea, it cannot do everything. And so by understanding AI, and this is the intent of this course, is to give you a firm understanding of what AI, what you can expect from the AI and what you can't. And so that's very critical. It cannot do everything. Anyone who's promising you that is a slick salesman that you should like oust from your you know, uh, uh, conference room immediately. Uh, the most advanced retailer in AI is unquestionably Amazon. And so I have attended a number of, of, of uh, meetings and I've gotten to see some of their plans um, and they are planning to use AI. They are using AI in every single major sub -org. And so they had in 2015 a mandate that every manager has an OKR where they have to implement AI into their organization and they actually have to do so. If they don't, then they, they're not going to get a promotion or worse, they may get fired. And so they'll do things, and this is a very common one, which is super easy to do. In almost every part of every organization, you have to forecast out. You're only as good as your prediction of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, deep auto regression can help you do that. And this is what they're using in almost every single sub work. And it's really important. We're going to cover this in the course. So what can AI do uh, for retail that couldn't have been done five years ago? A lot. I mean, I'm just adding some of the things that we've talked. we're going to cover in this course but it's, it's a ton and it's, you have to understand all these applications and the pros and cons and it has to be someone who understands AI teaching it, unfortunately. I've seen some lectures where people have been talking about it and it's cringeworthy as an AI practitioner, um, but say that. All right, and why the executive? I talked about that a little bit in the beginning of the course. The executive is the role model for the organization. This is a fundamental different way to run your chain, to run your company. And Harvard Business Review had this whole uh, article that I think is fantastic called Building the AI-Powered Organization. And that's what you need to do. And I would get started yesterday. I really would. You need to uh, uh, create, be a role model. And if the retail executive is taking it serious, where they are attending a course, what is the VP going to do that reports to you? They're going to do the same. And so you have to attend academic training to relearn or learn to learn AI and then cascade those management uh, by uh, uh, objectives or OKRs, whatever you want to call it, um, and then bring them through the entire organization. All right, that is all I have. Uh, I think we will uh, cut it short there. Uh, I am very hopeful you will take this uh, course and you will stick it out and you is going to be tough. There's going to be, you're going to do a lot of things. You're going to train your own deep learning models. You're going to um, do things that you probably, you know, have not, you know, look at math. You haven't looked at in a long time, but I promise you it will be worth it. And if you don't, your competitors will. Thank you. And we'll see you on the next lecture. Bye.